people i'm bharat acharya welcome to a new video so in uh, today's video we're going to learn the basic concept of hexadecimal and binary numbers okay uh, once for all 10 minutes just give me 10 minutes and you'll be clear about what these are now when you're learning our subjects of microprocessors and microcontrollers we only work in hexadecimal system every number written in these subjects is always in hexadecimal so students wonder why what was wrong with our good old decimal system why did we come up with this new thing it's a necessity we needed it see why uh the age old system that humans were using and the one that you've been using since childhood is decimal system now in decimal a single digit goes from 0 to 9 which means it gives you 10 different values tell me do you understand that much now inside the computer you know everything is just zeros and ones do you know this everything is stored inside a computer is in binary form so when i try to convert decimal numbers into binary i face a problem here is the problem what will zero be in binary yes it's so obvious it will be zero that's not the question the question is how many zeros how many binary bits do i devote to represent one digit if i devote only one bit it will have only two options 0 and 1 i will never be able to represent two if i use two bits i will get four options 00011011 so i'll be able to go to 0 1 2 similarly if i use three bits i'll get eight options 0 to 7 my problem is i want to go from 0 to 9 i have 10 values now to represent that three bits are not sufficient i need four bits tell me do you understand the point i'm making so far so far so soon say what's the problem use four bits of course we'll use four bits so zero will become 0000 1 will be 0001 9 will be 1001 i'm sure everybody knows how to do this come on this is you you don't you don't going to memorize their binary forms there is a trick 8421 if you follow that like how it's we have in decimal system units tens hundreds thousands similarly in binary they are all powers of 2 so 2 raised to 0 2 raised to 1 2 raised to 2 2 raised to 3 so if i want 9 9 means i want an 8 and a 1 8 plus 1 is 9 so that is 1001 if i want 4 that is 0100 if i want 6 that is 0110 uh, if i want 2 that is 0010 and so on i'm sure you know that okay so coming back to represent one digit i use four bits is this point clear now the problem is in four bits you can get 16 combinations you have used only 10 combinations so that means there are six combinations which are forbidden they don't have an equivalent representation in the hexadecimal form are you understanding the point i'm making so then what goes wrong if i try to do any arithmetic like simplest 8 plus 2 8 is 1000 0, 2 is 0010 0. i end up with a pattern 1010 0, which has no representation over here as a digit 10 in decimal form is written as two digits but i have got a single digit because i'm using four bits to represent a digit so if i am using four bits i am sure i am going to get 16 combinations i need to name each of those combinations there came the need for creating a new system which has 16 representations please tell me is the concept of using hexadecimal numbers clear if you use decimal numbers you get 10 combinations if you use hexadecimal numbers you go 0 to 9 and then 10 which is a so you got something to represent this pattern a then comes b which is 11 c that is 12 d 13 e 14 f 15 so you get 0 to 15 which gives you 16 combinations as compared to 10 so first of all your advantage is every possible binary combination has now been represented as a digit moreover on a single digit you get 16 values whereas on a single digit you getting 10 values that means you can store more information in less space now over here the difference seems to be small 10 and 16 seems to be small it is not small it is humongous if you look at a four digit number a four digit number in decimal system can be maximum 9999 9999 simply speaking 10000 whereas a four digit hexadecimal number goes up to fffff which is 65535 do you see the difference both are using the same space but who is giving you far more information hexadecimal system because it used up 
every possible combination. So when it gets multiplied over a bigger number, you can see the difference. This is 10,000, this is 65,000. If I tell you your starting salary will be a four digit number, you would want it to be a what number? Decimal or hexadecimal? You got my point. So in computers, we do not use decimal system. Decimal system is for the real world because it's easy to count. It came from this. It's the age old system. At that time, all these concepts were not there obviously. But computers are from the educated world, from the intelligent world where they created a concept of zeros and ones to do binary arithmetic. Now, when you have binary to represent all possible combinations of zeros and ones. You need 4 bits because you want 10 numbers. The 4 bits will give you 16 combinations. So create a new system that accommodates all those 16 combinations. So that's why everything in this subject is in hexadecimal form. Do not get confused. Inside the computer, everything is binary. But it is not the binary form of decimal numbers. It's the binary form of hexadecimal numbers so that you can represent every 4 combination of every four bits. Is that clear? Now, this conversion should be very fast. I gave you the trick already. 8, 4, 2, 1. So, suppose I ask you what is 9? Nine? 9 is 8 plus 1. That will give you 1, 0, 0, 1. A is 10. 10 means 8 plus 2. That will be 1, 0, 1, 0. So, a little faster now by yourself. I want 3. What is 3? Come on. What is 3? 0, 0, 1, 1. Nice. I want 5. What is 5? 0, 1, 0, 1. Nice. I want 35. Come on. Come on. What is 35? Come on. Don't, 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 don't get scared. This is 3. This is 5. I asked you 35. 35 is just the same two things. 3 is 0, 0, 1, 1. 5 is 0, 1, 0, 1. Hold on. Is this how you represent 35? 3 and 5. I'm asking you. Yes. If, you know what? Many people think, no, this is not how you do it the problem. Then people say microprocessors are tough. They are not tough. But if you start on such a wrong foot, you are starting on a tangent. How do you expect to understand big things if your basics are so shaky? There is another procedure of divide by 2, divide by 2 method. You know that, right? When do you use that? When you are converting from decimal to binary. And that will never happen in our subject. In our subject, microprocessors, we only work in hexadecimal system. I have given you the reason for that two minutes back. So every time you are converting, you are converting hex to binary. And hex to binary is converted the way I have converted right now. For every digit, you represent bits. But how many bits? 4 bits. The reason for that is one digit has 16 combinations. 16 combinations needs 4 bits. Are you clear? So 35 is this is 3, this is 5, 74. 0, 1, 1, 1 is 7, 0, 1, 0, 0 is 4, 93, 1, 0, 0, 1 is 9, 0, 0, 1, 1 is 3, FF, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, hold on, now look at this, 0, 0, 35, 74, 93, FF, they all totally, totally required how many bits? 8 bits. That is why they are called 8-bit numbers. Now, when you learn microprocessors, you keep coming across 8-bit numbers and 16-bit numbers all the time. Instead of being confused every time and every time racking your brains over something so silly, get it clear once for all. Tell me, if after this, you ever see this word written anywhere, so-and-so is an 8-bit register, so-and-so is an 8-bit number, what does that mean? What is the range of an 8-bit number? Come on. An 8-bit number has 8 bits. So the smallest value will be 8 zeros. Yes. How many zeros are these? Come on. Come on. Don't see what is just shown. Use your brains and answer. How many zeros are these? These are not 2 zeros. These are 8 zeros. That's the irony of the situation. We call it an 8-bit number. We don't write 8 bits because we don't write zeros and ones. We write it in hexadecimal form because it's easy to write. It's a compressed form. Works faster on writing, on paper. But inside the computer, this will be stored as 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So this is an 8-bit number. It's the smallest possible 8-bit number. Please tell me, did you understand this? And the biggest 8-bit number will be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, which in hexadecimal form will be FF. So the range of an 8-bit number goes from 0, 0 to FF. The range of a 16-bit number is 0, 0, 0, 0, up to FF, FF. Please tell me, is this clear? 8-bit number is also called a byte. 16-bit number is also called a word. Are you clear? Or two bytes, if you like it that way. <laughs> now, uh, I'm going to do a small exercise with you. 
I'm going to go on writing numbers on the board and you're going to go on telling me whether it's an 8-bit number or a 16-bit number. Say it out loud. Who cares who's, if somebody is watching you? Doesn't matter. You know you're doing the right thing. Okay. Let's be quick on this. 25. How many bit number? Yeah, yeah. How many bit number? Correct. 8-bit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 16-bit. I will not keep writing the H. Every number in our subject is hexadecimal. 5140, 16-bit. 40, 8-bit. 20, 8-bit. 80, 8-bit. 8000, 16-bit, 5136, 16-bit number, so on. I think you got my point. If I ask you to represent this number in binary, come on. 5136 is 0101, that is 5, 0001, that is 1, 0011, that is 3, 0110, that is 6, that is 5136. Like this, any time if I ask you to represent any number, will you be able to do it? You need to. These are all basics. This is not the whole learning of microprocessors. Microprocessors are very deep and very interesting. But to learn all of that, your basics have to be right. So this is a point where many people uh, get stuck up and then they goof up in the bigger points. I just wanted this to be crystal clear. Henceforth, anybody says an 8-bit number or a 16-bit number, you should know what they're talking about. Okay, just wanted you to know that. Now, I am in the process of making videos for this subject. Uh, I've been uh, working around the clock doing it as much as I can. Uh, I've putting up or I've been putting up all these videos on my own website. It's called www.bharataacharyaeducation.com. It's the same name. That is the name of this channel. Okay. So, uh, if you want to watch all the videos and learn the entire subject, all you need to do is go log on to that website, create your own login ID like you create everywhere in every social media site. Uh, it's a paid site because all of this requires a lot of effort. It's but I've kept time to keep the amount as low as possible. Subscriptions start from 499 Then there are better uh, uh, packages which uh, are a little more expensive but give you more, more and more features. We are, we are constantly working on that. So we are going to add many more features as and when we can. But anyway, anyway. So the subscriptions have started. People are, people are watching that website. So uh, you're most welcome if you want to learn the whole subject. Uh, check out the website. Also, my book is available now. Earlier it used to be on Amazon. I've uh, removed it from there. My book is now on my website. All you need to do is again the same thing. The price of the book I've kept as good as possible. Include shipment uh, about 500, 599 as of now. It uh, as of now as with the new increase in rates everywhere. Anyway, so uh, the physical deliveries of the book are only in India. Uh, so all you need to do is again log in, give your full address, make the payment. The book will be dispatched on the very next day, and generally it reaches even far flung places within three to four, max six working days. We say that just for the safety sake. Generally it's less than that. Okay, wish you all the best. Do well.